Hello everyone and uh, as I have completed with the first module so I will be starting today the second module and I hope that you have enjoyed the basics of strength of material lecture and on the basis of what I have taught you in the basic classes I will be further uh, entering into the depth of the subject that is the real importance of this subject you will come to know when you uh, study this subject further in detail. So in our second module what we will be dealing with is we will be trying to uh, uh, analyze what are the shear forces and the bending moment diagrams that are coming into picture in the real life scenario. So uh, what is the purpose of this uh, module why we are studying it because first of all we will see uh, why bending is so much important in our analysis and what is the what is the significance of bending moment uh, and shear force diagram why do we study it and in the actual uh, practice in the machine elements there are various links and there are various elements which are uh, which can be uh, analyzed with the help of the theory of beams and again uh, by the virtue of which we will be able to design that member in our machine component so uh, in a gist we can say that if we are able to know what is the maximum bending moment that is a beam is suffering then indirectly we can cal calculate what is the bending stress developed in the beam and we can design the beam accordingly. So our main target of this module is to uh, understand and to practice more and more problems so that we will be thorough in drawing the bending moment diagram and shear force diagram so what is this uh, sfd and bmd representing it is shear force diagram and this is bending moment diagram so our uh, usual practice is that we first uh, draw the uh, shear force diagram and by the help of which we will be drawing the bending moment diagram. We can uh, draw that one directly also but we will see how we can interrelate the diagram that we are drawing for the shear force to that of the bending moment. So starting with our module. So first of all uh, let me define the bending moment and what is the difference between moment and what is the uh, difference between moment and bending moment. So moment is nothing but the product of the force and the perpendicular distance from the particular axis where we are asked to find the moment. So it is nothing but a mathematical uh, multiplication or rather uh, rather you can say a, a cross product. A cross product uh, if you uh, see in vectorial terms then this moment is nothing but the cross product where we multiply the perpendicular distance. So why is this perpendicular distance uh, being written here? Suppose I want to find a, a, a moment m, a moment m, then I write in my general expression this moment m is nothing but r cross f, r cross f. So you all, all of you know that in cross product, in cross product, if I have two vectors that is a vector cross b vector, it is nothing but modulus of a into modulus of b into sin theta into n cap. So basically cross product is a vector product where you are getting uh, the uh, the terms in term, uh, the multiplication in term of a vector only. You can see here n cap. So what is this n cap representing? It is representing the vector, the normal direction, normal direction perpendicular to a and b. So the plane which will be containing the vector a and b the normal to that plane will be n cap. So a cross b is nothing but modulus. So what is this modulus? This is nothing but magnitude of the vector. Magnitude of the vector. Just I am giving you an example. Suppose a is a vector which is designated as a i cap plus b j cap plus c k cap. Then what is the modulus of a vector? It is nothing but root under a square plus b square plus c square. So in the same manner if you have a vector b and it is designated as d i cap plus e j cap plus uh, f k cap uh, something like that then you can again uh, find the modulus it by uh, squaring the uh, squaring the terms adding them and then performing the square root operation. So this is the general definition of the moment. The general definition is 
that it is nothing but the product of force and perpendicular distance. So this perpendicular word you will be uh, able to see in this expression itself that this term b sin theta. Suppose this this is my vector. This is my uh, vector b, and it is making a theta angle with a vector. So this distance is nothing but a uh, b sin theta. So the perpendicular distance multiplied by the force will give you moment. So what is this bending moment? Now this bending moment is the moment which is causing the bending effect on the beam. Means suppose this is my beam. Uh, I am taking a beam here. This is my beam. This is my beam, and a force, a force F, is causing this uh, member. Suppose this my end, uh, this end is fixed. Suppose I tell you to find what is the moment of this force about this point A. Suppose this A point is lying on this fixed, uh, fixed support, and you are asked to find out what is the moment. And and the distance this uh, the distance of point A from the point of application of the force is L. Then you will be getting the moment at A is nothing but F into L. So this is the bending moment because it is causing the uh, beam to get to get hog. It will be bending like this. So bending moment is also a part of moment only, a part of force into perpendicular distance only. You can see here clearly this force and this length L are in perpendicular direction. So directly we are multiplying it because the sine theta term here theta becomes 90 degree and sine 90 comes out to be one. So it is nothing but F into L. So there is a difference between when we say what is the bending moment acting at a section. So whenever we are seeing the bending moment which is acting at a section, we just draw a section. Suppose I want to find my bending moment here at section x x. Just I have drawn the section and I will analyze the bending moment from the left. Means I will calculate the forces which are giving moment at section x x. At one hand side means we will not calculate both from right hand or left hand. Just we will take one direction only. Suppose I am calculating the moment from the. So it is advisable here to calculate from the right hand side as force we can see here it is acting. So the moment if you calculate from this also then you will be getting the same result. But you have to isolate this fixed member and draw its reactions. Then only we will be getting the same answer from left hand side also. So it will be very easy if you draw the moment from right hand side here. So uh, just it was an introduction part, and I will be uh, clearing it in future also. If you are finding it difficulty, there is no worry here because it is just I'm, I am. I just you understand at this juncture that what is the meaning of moment. Again, the moment has one more classification in strength of material chapter that is twisting moment. This twisting moment is also force into perpendicular distance, but the plane where it acts is different. As I had told you earlier, also when I was talking about the distinction between bending moment and twisting moment, bending moment will always con uh, contain this longitudinal axis. So this is the longitudinal axis, and you see that this moment M is uh, it is is passing through this plane only. Means the plane where the longitudinal axis of the beam is line. So in case of twisting moment, twisting moment always acts in the plane which is parallel to cross section or in the in the plane of cross section itself. So this both type of bend, uh, bending moment and twisting moment are part of moment only. So the, for the time being we will be uh, seeing the bending moment in detail. So why we are analyzing this uh, bending moment and why we are analyzing this shear force? What is the purpose of it? So we will see its advantage. So what is the advantage of plotting a variation of the shear force? Uh, just I uh, told you at the beginning of this uh, starting that what is the purpose of this module is to make you thorough with the drawing of shear force diagrams and bending moment diagrams. So it is basically totally a mathematics plus geometry that will be coming into our analysis. So the variation of shear force F and bending moment M in a beam. As a function of x, so what is this function of x? So uh, whenever we are uh, given a member or wherever we are given a beam, so this is the beam. Suppose uh, we are given a beam. This is our beam, and 
and we have to find at a particular section. Suppose I have taken here x equal to 0 and this is the section where x equal to x dash suppose. So at a distance x dash or at a distance at any arbitrary distance we will be finding out what is the value of shear force and bending moment diagram and accordingly at each and every section if if I am asked to uh, find out where the maximum bending moment is uh, the beam is suffering the maximum uh, bending moment. So, in that case, I have to find the bending moment at each and every point. Thus, to simplify my analysis, what I will do is, I will write my bending moment expression in the uh, terms of x. So, just on putting the value of x in the equation which I will be formulating, we will be directly getting the value of shear force and bending moment at that particular section. So, uh, so and again what is our task is to the, uh, the further the determination of the value of bending moment as a function of x is of paramount importance so as to determine the value of deflection. So, uh, in the beginning itself I just told you what is the motive of the subject of strength of material. We are studying stress and deformation or deflection. So, whenever we are asked to restrict the deformation of a beam or a beam which is in actual functionality, in actual uh, means it is incorporated in a particular machine element, then we have certain limitations at uh, the by the amount of which the beam should be allowed to deflect or else if the deflection goes beyond that particular uh, safe limit, then the beam will fail. So, our design will be hovering uh, 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 around the stress analysis, the deflection analysis and the shear force analysis. So, this uh, part is uh, very much important as far as gate point of view is concerned because objective questions are now and then asked and it is also very simple. Once you are thorough with how the mathematical formulations are made according to the reactions and the load, then it will be very easy for you to analyze the same. So, we will be seeing in uh, uh, in our uh, next slides that uh, how we can do it very easily. So, uh, I just uh, want to introduce at the point of time what are the types of reaction. So, why is this reaction I am talking about? So, what is this reaction for? Suppose uh, there is a beam. So, now at this juncture uh, uh, till now I have uh, arbitrarily used the term beam, bar, but now I will be very specific in terming any member as a beam or as a bar. So, what is the difference between beam and a bar? Just I want to define beam in a formal way. Whenever you are asked somewhere in an interview or someone asks you, a technical person asks you, what is a beam and what is a bar? Many of you will answer that these both things are same only. But the technical difference is always there. In beam, you define beam as any member, any member which is, which is subjected to, subjected to a transverse load, transverse load. So, if, if this is my member, this is my member and this is a load, any load, suppose a P load is acting here. So, this P load is acting as a transverse load for this member because it is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis. So, if this is my longitudinal axis which I am drawing and to this axis load is perpendicular to it. So, it is a case of transverse load. So, remember friends whenever you are asked to define a beam, always define a beam like this that it is a mechanical component or it is a member where it is subjected to the transverse load only. Whenever this load means if I just uh, take this beam, if I just take this beam and I put it upside down means I just rotate this beam into 90 degrees. Suppose this, this was my beam and just I am erasing it for uh, clarity. So, suppose uh, this was my beam, this was my beam which I rotated it. Earlier, earlier this beam was in horizontal position. I just rotated it in 
90 degree in vertical direction. And now if I uh, apply a force P on the cross section, then here it is not a beam. It is not directly you cannot say it a beam because it becomes a column. It is a column. So what is the difference between beam and column? In beam, always you will find a transverse load which is acting means transverse means the load is always perpendicular to the longitudinal axis but in case of columns the load will be passing through the uh, passing through this longitudinal axis or sometimes maybe there will be some eccentricity but the line of action of the load means uh, line of action of the load is parallel to longitudinal axis or passing through longitudinal axis. Whether it will be uh, passing through the longitudinal axis itself or it will be parallel to the longitudinal axis. Then we will call it as a column. So I think that uh, this is very much clear to you. Uh, whenever you will be defining a beam and where you will be defining a column. And again, if, if, I, if someone says that what is then bar, if you are calling something as a bar, so it can be anything. Like a bar is a general case. Uh, whenever you say a bar, there you don't define what are the types of load uh, which is acting on it. So a bar can be a prismatic bar when we say, we mean that the bar is of uh, uniform cross section but when this bar uh, in that bar if a transverse load is acting then the bar will be behaving as a beam and whenever a compressive load will be acting then it will be behaving as a column. So uh, now uh, in this uh, slide we will be talking about what are the types of reaction. So whenever the machine element is present in um, a total machine itself whenever a particular element suppose a beam is present and it is being loaded then it must always be supported. I will show you uh, a few diagrams or few uh, pictures where you will be able to see that a particular uh, beam is uh, loaded in such a manner that we have to apply certain certain reaction means we have to apply certain forces to keep that member in equilibrium. So whenever we are providing some supports, then that support provides reaction to the beam. That support provides reaction to the beam. Just I take a simple example for understanding. Suppose this is my beam. Suppose this is my beam. And I have loaded this beam in this fashion. So this beam will not be in equilibrium. As a force P is acting here. So if I don't apply any support to this beam, then it will start accelerating in the downward direction. So to keep it, to keep it in equilibrium, we have to provide a support. We have to provide a support and this support can be of many different forms. It can be of many different forms. So uh, I will be discussing here many types of supports here and how we can analyze their reaction mathematically. So uh, I, I, there you won't find any other reaction other than what I will cover here. I will cover in much more detail here what will be the supports and how the reaction will be uh, offered by that support to the beam. So whenever uh, see uh, in actual practice if there is a beam and if it is loaded in a transverse direction then there are support like this. There is a pinned support and there is a roller support. So this is called a pinned support. This is called a roller support. I will be coming in uh, detail in much later. So what, 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 what will be the reaction offered by this pin and what will be the reaction offered by this roller? We will come to see when I will be talking about the types of beams. So here you can see uh, uh, different type of supports which are being shown in this table. This is just uh, to uh, make you understand what is the physical significance of the support when a uh, beam or when a particular member is attached to that support. So here you can see that in a real life uh, example you can see that a, a, a rope is attached to a cable or wire. A rope is attached to a, you, you can assume it also a, a member uh, or a cable where it is attached like this and also a spring can also be there. This is a spring. 
a spring can also be there so how the spring uh, will give the reaction to the member which is being uh, attached with the spring or which is being attached with the rope so here you can see in the free body diagram so uh, i will be changing the color here so in this free body diagram you will be able to see that a tension force is being provided a tension force is being provided by the spring means if 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 you cut this rope here if you cut this rope here then what will happen is this rope will come means the uh, the bar which was attached will try to come down so to keep this bar in same position we have to apply a tension t in this direction and what will be the force that will be acting on this rope if you draw the free body diagram of the rope then it the tension will be along this direction so as the tension as the tension is a internal force so we were not able to see that force when the member was attached whenever uh, you want to see any internal force on a member then what you have to do is is to cut that member after cutting it you will be able to see what are the types of forces which are coming into picture by drawing its free body diagram so here the free body diagram of the member of this member has been drawn here by cutting it so here i have detached this member from the rope or the spring and you can see that to keep this member in the equilibrium condition a tension t is acting along this direction along this direction so it is collinear with the line of action of the rope or cable again if you uh, just i showed it here i just want to uh, make here only suppose if i were asked to draw what is the force that is being acted on the rope or the spring if i uh, this is the fbd of this is uh, this diagram is fbd of the fbd of the link i will say it is the fbd of the link now i will show you what will be the fbd of the rope so suppose this rope was attached like this so this is my rope so as tension force is acting towards north uh, west side so again it will be opposite in manner and it will be acting along south east side so it is just uh, opposite to each other and it will be also of magnitude t so now you can see that if i join this and this member then this t and this t cancels out and it must be why because this tension is nothing but a internal force this internal force will always be seen only when you cut that member or isolate that member to which it is being supported now coming to the second type of reaction you can see the link is lying on this smooth surface so what is the significance of this word smooth that there is no friction acting in this surface so if there is no friction acting so we can ignore the effect of friction so if the um, uh, link is sliding over it then there will be no opposing friction force so what will be the only force that will be acting in this member will be the normal force which will be perpendicular to this line means suppose if is the if this point is in contact and you are drawing a tangent here uh, if you draw a tangent here suppose you are drawing a tangent here so to this tangent to perpendicular to this line will be the line of action of this support so this uh, vertical uh, whenever you have any one support which is supporting the link it will always be perpendicular to the perpendicular to the tangent to the surface to which the member is in contact so uh, this is the case of smooth surface again always in real life application of the uh, machineries you don't find any ideal smooth surface there is always the effect of friction we account that friction by taking the factor of safety because if we start uh, analyzing our uh, problem in actual scenario then it becomes very tedious to do the mathematical formulation so we keep a reserve amount of stress generated in the beam as a factor of 
safety. Always uh, you, you, you will be hearing a term factor of safety in the design questions because there we take a reservation in term of stress. We quote the stress due to failure to be lesser than the actual failure limit of the member to be on the safe side because we never know what will be the actual uh, stress developed by considering the effects of all the forces. So ideal situation is we assume it to be smooth. So you can see that if I assume it to be uh, rough in my next uh, reaction, here the surface is rough. You can see that in microscopic level, there are asperities. Asperities are nothing but asperities are the protrusions in the surface, in the uh, real surface. Whenever you look with the microscope, then in actual practice, the surface is not at all smooth. There is always the asperity which is protruding out of the surface. And this asperity provided, provides the frictional resistance. Means it provides the resistance to the slipping. So, uh, there is always a reaction offered by this asperity. What will happen is, if I load this beam, suppose I am load, I have loaded this member P. I have loaded it P. I am not calling it a beam, just I am calling it a member which is loaded by the force P. So what will happen is, the disparities which are along this side will try to give it the resistance. They will try to resist its slipping motion and in that due course, it will be providing a reaction to the member to the normal direction again. So, uh, uh, what happens is whenever uh, we are, uh, sometimes what happens, the line of action of this normal is not, uh, means you can say that it is not always uh, we will be able to find out what will be its angle with respect to horizontal. So, what we do is, whenever there is a force which is acting in an arbitrary direction to the member, we will try to break it in component. So, it is very, very useful tool Suppose I am giving you an example here that I am clean uh, cleaning it off for the sake of clarity that suppose I have a force P here. Suppose this is my coordinate system uh, as usual right hand coordinate system. This is X, this is Y and I have my line of action of force is F. It is F and it is making angle theta with the horizontal. So, for the sake of simplicity, for the sake of balancing our equ uh, static equation forces, I can write that the force which is acting in x direction is nothing but f cos theta. It is f cos theta and the force which is acting in y direction is nothing but f sin of theta. So, this is f cos theta and this is f sin theta. So, uh, always whenever there is a, a complex direction of the line of action of the force, we will break it into the horizontal and vertical component and there we will try to put a suffix x for the horizontal component and suffix y for the vertical component. So, you can see here actual force was, actual force would have been like this, uh, the reaction force would have been like this. So, I am naming this uh, reaction force as A. A is my reaction force. So here, to make the uh, make the analysis simpler, to balance the forces in a simpler way, I have shown here that this A force can be broken into components of A x and A y. So what is the resultant of this A x and A y? It will be nothing but the force A only. And how I will get this? Suppose this is A x and A y. Suppose this is A x and A y. So, magnitude of this force A is nothing but AX square plus AY square. If I am uh, required to find what is the angle, so I will just quote that tan theta is nothing but AY upon AX. So, this is the angle that the force is making with the horizontal. So, now these were the uh, some of the real uh, situations that uh, come into picture. Now, in our analysis, first of all, the basic analysis that I will start with will be starting from a pin support. So, what is a pin support? Just you can imagine that if you, if, if you, uh, if I draw the front view of this section, this is the total pin support which has been shown. 
and if you see the front view you will be able to see there is a pin i am not marking here so uh, it will would be uh, uh, you will not uh, not be able to see you can see here a pin here right so this pin is there this pin is there and this is a hole uh, this pin is there and it is it is inside a hole so you can uh, understand the similar thing that it uh, this pin support is also known as hinge i will give you a practical uh, situation here like you would have shown the uh, you have uh, you uh, you would have seen the door hinges so in the door hinges if you observe it carefully then there will be a link or a pin which will be uh inside that uh, hole means that will be inside uh, the slot by the virtue of which the door will be able to rotate if the pin will rotate in the hinge then the door itself will rotate so it is the same thing only so what is the purpose of pin support it gives a reaction only in two directions because it is allowing the member to rotate in itself it is very very important to note the point at this juncture only that pin support whenever you give a bending load to a member which is a uh, supported by a pin like whenever you are trying to push your door you are uh, indirectly you are giving a bending uh, moment to that and it the uh, uh, after the application of the force you see that door has been opened or door has been closed it means that the load is not being registered means the bending load is not registered by the hinge so always keep in mind that hinges never and never they uh, you can say uh, they never what you uh, that that this hinge support never restricts the bending moment they yield to the bending moment means if you apply the bending moment to the hinge then it will rotate it will not restrict the bending moment make it clear always whenever see whenever you see a hinge then you can always see that it will not offer any resistance to the bending load i am repeating a uh, uh, one or two times because this is of very very much importance so you can see that you as the bending moment has not been restricted by the hinge so no bending reaction is coming into picture so only you are getting is what the forces that is ax and ay so for the hinges always you have to draw two reaction forces so it may happen that the direction of the external loading is such that only vertical reaction ay is coming into picture and ax will turn out to be zero or in the other way if the horizontal force is acting on this member then vertical reaction will come out to be zero so i am explaining it again because it is of uh, great importance that suppose this is my member this is my member and on the both hand uh, both sides we, we just represent hinges like this on the both hand uh, right hand and left hand i have hinge support and i have loaded my bar in this or uh, loaded my beam in this manner so what will happen is again i will try to draw both the reaction suppose here is my a point here is my b point and it is r a x that is horizontal reaction uh, at point a along x direction x direction this is r a y and again this is r b y and this is r b x so you can see that this uh, over, while writing the equilibrium of forces in y direction i can just write that this p force is nothing but r a y plus r b y so this uh, force in the vertical direction uh, is nothing but the summation of the reaction in the y direction at point a and point b so on balancing the horizontal equation we get that suppose i have taken my positive x axis along right hand side so r a x minus r b x is equal to 0 so r a x minus r b x equal to 0 which means r a x equal to r b x as there are no loads no component of the load acting in horizontal direction it means that r a x and r b x are both equal and they are zero only so for the hinges or for the pin support 
we will see that the two reaction will be coming into picture but it may happen that one of the reaction is zero but in our analysis whenever we will draw the free body diagram we will try to show both the horizontal and vertical reaction which is coming into picture and after writing the equation we will conclude that which component is zero or either both components are present okay so uh, coming on to the next and uh, this is also a different type of supports i will say that are uh, generally uh, present in the machine elements like this is a roller support so again a roller support is somewhat like a hinge but it's not hinge itself like suppose in my uh, last i just want to recall what, what how the hinge was looking this one was the hinge and this pin is not allowing the member to translate in this direction means the the movement of this leg has been restricted totally it has been restricted totally but in case of roller support the beam can translate along the direction of movement of roller so this is the roller support and this uh, roller can move in either direction either direction so this uh, member can move in either of the direction in this direction but it cannot it cannot uh, go inside the ground means it cannot move in, in this direction the motion is prohibited so again for the roller support what you will see is there will be no restriction in the direction to the movement of roller so there is a there is a uh, there is no restriction in this direction so the horizontal component of the reaction in the ro roller will not come into picture so many of you will ask uh, you must be having a question in your mind what is the purpose of giving a roller in the beam why we give a roller if the beam will itself translate then what will be the actual uh, use of that beam so i am giving you just a diagrammatic representation suppose this is my beam and one side i have hinged it this is the symbol of hinge and on the other side i have provided a roller support so this is the symbol of roller support that i will be using so uh, what will happen is this beam can move in this direction can move so as this pin support won't allow a point to move from here as a point is always attached with the beam so what will happen is the b point will be allowed to move so many of you will be again having a question if point a is attached to the hinge so how can b move like uh, in actual practice what happens is this a uh, beam may function in certain areas where temperature scale is very very high in our country the temperature never remains uniform throughout the year so whenever in the hot conditions what you will see that this beam can elongate the beam can elongate due to the thermal strain again remember the concept of thermal strain whenever we are heating a member or the member is subjected to heat then the member tries to expand linearly so the same situation will happen when this beam is functioning in an area where the temperature is too high so on 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 that account what will happen is beam will try to elongate and if i provide in uh, if 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 temperature is large and if i provide provide a hinge support here on the right hand side then what will happen is this two point will be restricted and due to the elongation due to thermal strain this beam will not be straight it will it will be a be, becoming a curved because as there has been increase in the length and this length is not allowed to uh, free itself so the the buckling not buckling exactly a uh, the beam will get curved uh, and our the uh, the functionality the actual functionality of the beam will be lost totally so i will just uh, give you another uh, practical example many of you would have seen the tracks the railway tracks some ga gaps are always kept in between so what is the purpose of this gap not too much gap otherwise uh, derailment will take place so some gap is always present so suppose this uh, this is uh, the two rails are present so there are uh, uh, there is some gap kept in between so what is the purpose of this gap the purpose of this gap again is the thermal strain 
whenever there will be a hot condition then this two rail will try to expand and this expansion will takes place towards this gap only and this gap will be trying to filled up so whenever this gap is kept very very small then what will happen is the rail will uh, lose its straightness and it will become curved and it will be again a dangerous scenario so to compensate the purpose of st uh, thermal strain we have a roller support in our design so it has got a significance dear friends it is not just like that uh, we make roller support roller support has got a very very a greater significance in actual practice so this these are the equivalents of roller support so roller support uh, in many question in foreign uh, author books you will find that they will not show hinges directly like this or they will not show roller support like this so whenever you will be solving uh, problems from uh, books like uh, Timoshenko Gere or any other book, Crandall Lardner, then you will not see that uh, these uh, roller support are uh, shown directly there. Uh, like uh, you won't see that hinges are represented simply or they don't write also what is the uh, support type that is being given. You have to identify. So I have uh, this slide for you. Like for this roller support, you will see that there can be of three types. Three types roller support can be present. So, so this uh, support is very uh, easy to identify. As uh, you can see, a ball has been shown here. So, whenever you see a rounded object, so it will be a type of roller support only. Here also, this type of configuration is also a kind of roller support. And here also, you can see there is a point contact. If you see from the front view, there is a point contact, but actually it is a line contact and this will be also a, a roller support because it will be, the beam will be able to move in this direction. So, uh, in case of roller support, what reaction we will be getting is along, along perpendicular direction to the movement of the roller. So, you can see here only the force A in vertical direction is coming into picture. And here, here straight away we can say that the horizontal reaction will be zero. So if if this is uh, if this was a x and this was a y, so straight away we can say that a x will be zero because it is not restricting the member in horizontal direction. Only the restriction is taking place in the vertical direction. So. Again, uh, 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 there uh, there may be some applications where uh, there are sliders used. Sliders. So, a slider is nothing but it is the combination of the pin joint with a slider which will be sliding on another machine component. So, this uh, you can see here uh, very uh, minutely uh, you can see that there is a pin here in the slot. This is a slot. Slot is nothing but slot is nothing but uh, you get a uh, you will be uh, seeing a, a path which is made in a particular member such that other a pin or other member can slide inside it or slide over it so this is just a, a constraint pin slider this is an external slider and again uh, here as it is moving as this is this is able to move in the horizontal direction Again, we can conclude that the reaction will always be present in vertical direction only. So, the normal force that will be coming into picture will be of vertical direction only and Ax will amount to be zero. So, in the case of roller support and constraint pin or slider support, always keep in mind that horizontal reaction is always zero. Now, the, the, the next case is of a fixed built-in support. So, what is built-in support? Built-in support is nothing but the beam has been fixed to one end. Like, if, if this is my beam, this is my beam, this is my beam, and I have supported this beam in such a manner, I will show you the support like, I have supported this beam in such a manner that it is some part is inside the support only. So this, this is known as, this type of beam is known as fixed beam or built-in support. So what is a fixed beam? In the fixed beam, you can see that here 
the beam is not allowed to rotate also means here the bending moment is also being restricted by the fixed support so what is the difference between fixed support and hinge support fixed support will always restrict the vertical forces and also the moment but in case of hinge support as i had already also told it earlier that it will be offering resistance to the vertical or horizontal forces only but hinges don't offer resistance to bending moment they just yield in bending moment and they rotate in their own pin axis of on the application of bending moment but mind you in case of built in and fixed uh, beam which is fixed at one end so bending moment will also be restricted by it so i hope i had uh, made it uh, very clear now i will show you what are the component of forces that will come into picture on account of reaction from the built in uh, means if it is built in a wall then what the wall will provide reaction to the beam so you can see that if i apply a force p suppose i have applied a force p here so this on the virtue of this uh, load p you, you you can see that these two horizontal forces will uh, horizontal and vertical forces will always be present whether it is a, a pinned support or it is a fixed support but extra thing which you will be able to say is this moment so this moment was not present in the pinned support but this moment is present in the fixed support so you can say that this moment uh, the uh, the fixed end is also of offering resistance to the moment so uh, a moment resistance will appear so basically and just i will conclude the type of reactions uh, the type of supports we have studied that first case was of uh, first case was of pinned support in pinned support what we have studied is always two reaction will be coming into picture that is the a uh, vertical uh, force direction and the horizontal reaction but there will be no reaction of the bending moment but in case of the fixed beam you will be getting bending moment in the reaction as well as the two uh, vertical and horizontal forces but in case of roller support there will be no horizontal force there will be no moment and moment sometimes are there it depends on the question i will show you but always uh, it 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 has no horizontal reaction so i think uh, it was a uh, very much in detail i have told you at this moment because in uh, in future you won't find any problem so coming on to my next part as i told you i will be showing some uh, means i will be showing a pic where you will be able to see what are this actually uh, supports which i have taught you like pinned support so what are these so i have marked here certain points so first point so first a uh, marked circle you can see in the picture is this one so this is the uh, marked picture see this is the pin so you will be able to see this is the pin this is the pin which is fitted inside this is actually a this is actually a many of you uh, may be knowing this is a actuator this is a actuator actuator uh, you can see uh in the cranes also you see that signing part is there whenever uh, the boom uh, that is actually known as boom whenever boom is elongated to pick up a load at a certain distance you will see that whenever the boom is rising you will be seeing a signing part that signing part which is coming out is basically the basically the role of a actuator which is giving a certain pressure by the virtue of which the actuation process is taking place so this is a just a mechanical component here you can see a pinned support here you can see a pinned support here again there is a pinned support here and here also a pinned support so just i if i isolate this element if i isolate this element and try to draw this link then it will be somewhat like this so uh, i it won't be very much proper just a rough sketch i am drawing and this will be uh, not uh, this is like pen i have i will just uh, redraw it for the sake of clarity uh, it is necessary to all of you know the purpose why we study all this is because everything in theory and no particular uh, practical application you won't get much interest so this is the pen this is my pen and 
and this is shaped like this it is shaped like this so again this is the pin here and again this is the pin here so there are three hinges which are being applied on this link so whenever we will study the links then we will isolate it from the machine component we will try to see what are the loads acting on it we will try to from the theory of uh, types of supports we will try to draw the reaction forces and in this manner in this manner we will be trying to solve what will be the bending moment acting on this beam and we will be drawing the shear force diagram in the same manner this uh, this complete actuator can be represented as a horizontal member suppose this is a horizontal member this is a horizontal member and this is pinned here this is pinned here this is pinned here so there are only two pin supports here so again what will be the forces that will be acting as i told you that in hydraulic actuator what happens is the oil there is a oil which pressurizes it and by that uh, you i will show you in the diagram itself you can see this this part this is sine part this is coming out of this barrel this is a barrel something that it, it 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 is not called actually barrel just to make you understand that from this barrel it is coming out it is coming out in this direction so when it is coming out in this direction it is pressing this member this link and as it is pressing this link so this link will rotate this link will rotate so when this link will rotate as it is a rigid link so this side will uh, go backwards on the account of rotation and you see some other link uh, which i was not able to capture it properly you can see that this link will be going backward side so it is a complete mechanism you have applied a pressure here a pr pressure of oil has been applied p oil has been applied and this pressure has caused the piston to move towards rest uh, right uh, right side and this piston has caused the elongation of this steel part uh, which is the link hydraulic link and this link is pushing this member on uh, by the this is transferring the force uh, with the help of this pin and as this is rotating in clockwise so and it is fixed here it is fixed here so it cannot translate so what what it can do is when it is rotating in clockwise then this point must rotate in anti clockwise uh, sorry in clockwise manner so it will go back and it will try to pull a link and some other mechanism like a digger may be placed and the uh, the purpose will be solved so here we can see that this pin is allowing us to transfer the load from one point to another you can see that here there are uh, many many points suppose i name it suppose i name it i am clearing it off everything so suppose i am naming my uh, points like this is my point 1 this is my point 2 this is my point 3 and this is my point 4 so from 1 to 2 we can see that pressure is pushing the actuator part this is the actuator part that is the shiny part this is the shiny part and this shiny part i am just writing it shiny part only so that you will be having a better clarity of the subject so this shiny part is uh, transferring its load to the second pin and second pin is rotating on, on that second pin itself means the second pin is transferring the force to this link it's transferring the force to this link and the second pin to third pin means third pin is the point of point of rotation and from third pin what happens is the load is transferred to fourth pin fourth pin is going backwards and it is trying to pull the pull the link so whole mechanism uh, is very much clear to you now you, you can feel the importance why we were studying in detail the types of reaction because in actual uh, machine elements they are of very much importance so from the uh, in the next lecture we will try uh, to analyze our this this whole uh, practical thing into uh, our own formulations by which we will be uh, solving the practical problems and we will be studying about 
what are the various types of beams that will be we will be encountering in real life situation and how we can handle its bending moment and shear force diagrams and uh, and we will be seeing its mathematical formulation till then try to revise all the concepts try to revise whatever i have told you as i was uh, going a uh, very means i was trying to explain uh, very each thing in very detail because this is a very very important chapter and it is uh, to be kept in mind that each and every point that has been covered here is of utmost important you must keep in mind while solving the problems though they may not directly fetch you marks in the gate but if you don't know all these things then you will not be able to move any problem which will be coming i will show you as i had uh, showed earlier also various varieties of problem i will be covering in this section also till then revise the concept be healthy take care thank you